Please do turn off your mobile phones. <coughs> Wait for the length, the wonderful length. What would we do without it? <laughs> for goodness sake, we would be very poor indeed. Yeah. Very poor. And as we stand and sing the most appropriate hymn this morning, praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Please stand if you are able, it's not string, please be comfortable throughout the service.
and as we say the words in yellow and together, there may be things running through your mind and your heart that you, we, need to bring to the Lord. As we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the sure and certain hope, the foundation of our hope, we receive God's forgiveness. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by His Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. And we're going to pray for our children and young people as they leave for their own lesson.
They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. So, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it receives many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servants also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now, my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, The voice was for your benefit, not for mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. This is the word of God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Have a plate that's really great. I think what I've done is I've opened the wrong, um, which in true when you stand up and not surprise you. And I'm hoping the wrong part but we're all right, we're doing okay. Please sit down.
it chases. It has to be buried in the ground. Because it has to grow. So I'm glad you like that, I think. So here our field of wheat. I'm not going to detract from my talk, but I've put these pictures into this PowerPoint. <laughs> which have been loved this morning when people can see I'm struggling, you've got lid coming down, you've got lids coming up, you've got dye coming up and this is what makes us who we are because we care for each other. Am I there? Am I coming over? I'm alright. I'm alright really. Oh, I've got heckling down here from my husband and my daughter. I've never been all right. No, it's always hot. Anyway, the passage begins, doesn't it, with words um, of a group of Gentile worshippers. I love this because that's us. We're the Gentiles. First came for the Jews and then the Gentiles. And they're visiting Jerusalem. They're getting ready for the Passover. So some of them come along to Philip to make their request. And they say, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip says, Come on, follow me. Is there a tone? Is there a posture? We don't know. Is it demanding? I don't think it's demanding. I think it's quite quite polite, don't you? And sir, we wish to see Jesus. Maybe they had motivation of curiosity, reverence. Sounds like it, doesn't it, from those few words. We wish, if we love Jesus with our heart, mind and soul, we too wish to see Jesus, not just on this fifth Sunday in Lent. Congratulations if you started out at the beginning and you're still doing whatever it is, you're still giving up or you've still taken on. Personally, I take on because I'm giving up, giving up. <coughs> I digress. So, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground, unless it dies, it cannot bear fruit. Reminded me of Jesus being the vine and all those wonderful grapes that hang down if the vine is tended to properly, bears much fruit. Us, as grapes, if you like, have to hang on closely to the vine, of course, which is Jesus. So the Gospel tells us time and time again that we must give ourselves up. Our Christian life is all about self-sacrifice. Jesus wants us to bear fruit and we can't do that if we're hanging on to all those bits that we really like, we're not very comfortable with, but actually we don't want to give them up either because, well, we've always had them, haven't we? And we keep hanging on to bits that can really do us harm. That's why Jesus makes this, this uh, comment. You must die to self and all your wants. Because he wants to give us just what we need. And we speaking personally, we can often get the two mixed up. Look at the beautiful daffodil. How glorious they look. Everywhere you go at this time of year, we were fortunate enough to take some home uh, last week as well for Mothering Sunday. But a simple daffodil. 
that if you look at the bulb, when you buy the bulbs, you would actually think what what can come out of that there. But you see, it's planted, isn't it, in the pot or in the ground, and every year it comes back, it grows from nothing. And I read something a few weeks back and it's really stuck with me. So sometimes we too can feel like we've been buried with our circumstances, with our situations, with how we behave or others behave towards us. We can feel like we've been buried. When in actual fact, Wendy with her glass half full, would like to look at it from a different angle and see that we've been planted and we have been planted for God's glory. And we're pushing ourselves up through the ground like the daffodils as we carry on our Christian journey. We're going from darkness to light, to bear fruit, to tell our Jesus story and to let others see our beauty. Now sadly, we haven't always got that beauty, have we? People come along and they rub us up the wrong way and they make their hair stand up on the back of my neck and we wonder if we're ever going to be able to um, behave appropriately alongside them. But we need to keep on keeping on with our Jesus story. Because if we don't keep sharing our Jesus story, if we keep it hidden, lots of times when I go to funeral visits, people will say to me, oh, I used to go to St Paul's school, St Paul's Sunday school, St Paul's girls brigade, St Paul's boys brigade, and I, what, where's your seat? I don't say that because that would be rude. Wait, what have they done with their seed? Because they talk about a God that they knew when they were eight or nine or ten. And then it's become not much good. So they've left him on one side. And because they've left him on one side and he's in the field without, um, without water, the seed stays dormant because it's not being tendered properly. So Jesus says, with reference to our lives as his disciples, those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their lives in this world will keep it for eternal life. And you think, well, that's a bit stark, isn't it? I quite like my life, thank you very much. I'm not doing much harm. But what he's referring to, it doesn't mean to hate one's life, doesn't mean to despise one's life as having no value. Actually, quite the opposite. He wants us to have a higher value on who we are with our own survival. So, do we value our lives? Not in a way where we think that we can lord it over each other, because one does one thing and one doesn't do another thing. We don't want to lord it over the rest of the people but with a true sense that we have a word in Jesus. And if we value ourselves and know that our word comes from Jesus, then we're halfway there, aren't we? For a long, long time, I didn't know what it was like to be me, and I'm sure a lot of people women and men here today didn't know. 
who they were, why they were. Who was I? I came to a little crossroads. Lots of those, isn't there? Who was I? What did I want? Oh, I could tell you off the top of my head what Pete wants, what Hayley wants, and the rest of my family members. I probably know what they want even before they know what they want, if you see what I mean. So I can do that, it looks like falling off a log. I've kept people and loved people all my life. I can get everyone's favourite thing. When it comes to me though, it's totally different. Why? If we have a worth in Jesus, why does it have to be different for us? Why, why do we have to, I'll speak personally, why do I have to have the last piece of bread that's a dry crust? Why do I have to have the burnt toast? There's an excellent book about that, by the way. I don't know who it's by. If you can't see it, Google it. Why, why do I? Well, the simple answer is, I don't. I choose it. I can actually put the crust in the bin or throw it out for the birds and get a new slice out. Because some days I don't feel worthy of a fresh slice fresh slice of bread. What do I want to do? What do I want to eat? And so, because in the past, I hope I'm much better now, it's been a long journey. And in that journey, I've invariably made some pretty bad choices. Challenging choices. And Jesus says, if we lose our lives, yes, but not ourselves. That's who he's called. He's called Judith and Wendy and Phil and Liz and Eileen. He's called us all. He doesn't want us to lose ourselves in that respect. He wants us to find out who we are in him. Because we belong to him. Jesus invites us to identify ourselves with him. Who am I? I am Wendy in Jesus. It's like when we get baptised and we give those promises out to follow in his footsteps, to find life by dying to ourselves, because that's what baptism is about, isn't it? Down with the old and up with the new life. So we're dying to those old wants and looking to Jesus providing our needs. Maybe we can ask ourselves the question, what does it mean to be me? Not only that, but what does it mean to be me in Jesus? Because that will help us to make some, he will help us to make some good choices that will allow us to honour him and to bring glory. So just like the voice of the Father came down to the Son, that's what he does for each one of us. When he says at Jesus' baptism, this is my Son, I am well pleased. They're not just pleased. Oh, that's nice. No, he's well pleased. And he wants to be well pleased with each one of us. Because when we take that Jesus path, when we start listening to what Jesus has for each one of us in our lives, and it will be different, but the same, We go from being buried by our circumstances, our situations, whatever's going on in and around us, 
We can believe then that we have been planted for a future glory, the glory of God the Father. So Lent can be a school for learning. And we've had um, lots of discussions through our Lent, our little Lent Bible studies. Sometimes we want to look at the window and think, oh yes, that's very nice, the way the truth and the life, yes, I can see can see the window, it's there and it's wonderful. Actually, we need to look through the window because when we look through the window, we will die to self and be raised to that new life. Let's not get stuck looking at the window rather than through the window to heaven because that's where we're all bound aren't we? Oh, I hope so I hope so Dying physically dying is not the end We suffer We all do in different ways It's a way of transforming who we are God the Father speaks to Jesus the Son, and we are all his sons and daughters. Rooted and grounded in love. And we only get that by, by watering the roots of our faith. Because if we don't, it's going to be like the sea just left there to die. Do you want to see Jesus? So look for the ways in which he, in where he is in your life. The places where your life is most guarded, most insulated, most isolated, because these can be places of blindness. Let's go back to that, looking at the speck in our neighbour's eye and looking in the mirror and seeing the boulder in our own. Each one of us is a grain of wheat. And tended properly, we can bring much fruit. If we let it fall to the earth, it will die. So I've got one final little, I'm sorry about, as you can see, I'm very much a novice in the picture department. So unless, I bet you can't see that very well, can you? It's because when I was putting the picture on, it was about that big. And my mate was telling me, as Di has told me before, you stretch it here, you stretch it there, and you do this and you do that, and you make it fit the little black space. And I actually think I did that quite well, to be fair. You see, if you can't read that, it's planting our lives into the ground, which is part of what our gospel reading was today. Planting our lives. We need to be dying to see Jesus. Now, you might have to come a bit closer to actually read what it says. And I thought that was really good because we all need to be closer to Jesus. Don't we? Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you.
to do it, isn't it? Let's stand and sing together. Be still. <coughs> Let's just 
just pause. As we bring to the Lord those of our heart, Put your healing hand upon them, and may they know you are very near to them, to comfort and to hold them. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. And being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. Now and forever. Amen. And please stand as we sing together. Come down of love divine.
draw near with faith. Thank <laughs> you. 
but there is a crack room next Monday. Our Bible study meets um, on Wednesdays, uh, and you're very welcome to the Wednesday evening at 7.30, and then that's repeated on Thursday at 1.45 after coffee and biscuits and soup and roll. It's about 1.45 that that starts. Um, I'm just going to click on for a moment. So there is the final lunch lunch at St John's College, 12 till 2. And while I'm here, our lunch lunch at the back that 50 people came to, I think the final total was £345. Round of applause.
You do. So there is basic safeguarding training available. It's coming up. And so if you know you need to do a basic safeguarding training, then you'll need this. If you are wanting or already helping out in church life, then you will need a basic safeguarding training. And first of all, you will need to sign a declaration form. So if you are still not signing a declaration form, then can you find one here in the corner of the social area? And can you find, find it, sign it, and then it will be filed away in the area that it should be. That's your side up sheet for Monday Thursday. Thank you, Lynn. That's there, that's at the back. Now, um, through Holy Week, we will be having, as I've said, our Monday Thursday service, and then on Good Friday, 1 o'clock until 2.30, we have 2.30. We have a PowerPoint and it's just quiet reflection and a meditative time. Okay, and then at 2.30 I will do a very short service, 2.30 to 3. And then we'll meet in silence, that 3 o'clock being the final, it is finished. And of course we all know that it never was, that was just the beginning. Also, on Good Friday, I have it on good authority that the walk of witness is actually um, on. Uh, I've heard nothing from this, but I've had it from, on good authority, like I say, so 11 o'clock from St. John's as normal. And um, you, anyone is invited to that to do the walk of witness, carrying, take it in turns, carrying the cross. And we'll be praying outside Central Park, St Paul's, St John's, and I think there's also a movement down to Netherfield. So there's lots on offer for you, whatever way you are comfortable with throughout Holy Week. Are there any other notices? Phil? Not Harry. The, uh, in the church, when we go around, the signs of the cross. Right, oh, the yeah. signs of the cross. There's one here as well, is there? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, I do apologise. Tuesday, the 26th of March, Stations of the Cross. That's St. John's Oakdale Road, not that way. Stations of the Cross, 7 o'clock. So there's plenty there for you um, to choose what you would like to do. So before we sing a very special happy birthday, I'd just like to make a reference to Roy, who came with a big smile on his face, or pointing out, in case you don't know who he is, is at the back there, right, and he's waving. So uh, Roy came to see me and he said, I just want to tell you that I have finally got new hearing aids. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I said, traffic. That's very well done. And then he said to me that there will be a moment in the service where he will turn his um, hearing aid down. Now, I wonder which bit of the service you think he might turn it down for. You can ask him over coffee, can't you? Is that it? Are we done? Let's sing our final song. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb on the throne. Please stand if you are able.
just before we receive God's final blessing, uh, I forgot, because you know I would, um, there's Rotus. For those of you that, um, that was a thank you, good thing. Um, Rotus are available in the social area. Please do pick one up. Sophia Reminder from Pat. So please do pick one up. And as I've already said about people and power and needing more people's power, if you can at all this morning, can someone please help with the coffee and the tea and putting the biscuits out? Because it's a really important part of our ministry, sharing together after the service. And as we remain standing, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and all those that you love and care for. The Lord be gracious to you and bring you his peace. And we ask for this blessing in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do stay for tea and coffee. Thank you, Lynn. Alright darling, just go 